If you've just been diagnosed with Meniere's disease, that can be a little bit scary because clearly you've had symptoms that led to the diagnosis, right? You've had vertigo and nausea and tinnitus and hearing loss. Uh, and now you finally got the diagnosis. And unfortunately, a lot of doctors are going to, well-meaning doctors, I should say, are going to tell you things like, well, you just got to learn to live with it. You know, don't drink much uh, sodium or caffeine, take a diuretic, you know, and we'll see you back in six months or a year. A lot of Meniere's patients suffer terribly because their Meniere's is not stable. So I'm going to share with you over the next few minutes some things I think that will really make your life a lot easier. So if you've just been diagnosed with Meniere's, let's get into it. So hopefully the doctor that diagnosed you with Meniere's tried to explain what it is. Uh, I'll give you the 30 second explanation. Uh, it's called endolymphatic high drops. Sometimes people call it cochlear high drops. Basically what happens is in the inner ear, uh, you know, it's a confined space and you get increased fluid pressure, right? And there's really no place for this fluid pressure to go. So it goes through the path of least resistance and there's not much place for it to go. And so it starts to crush your inner ear from the inside out. And it can happen sporadically, it can happen kind of progressively over time, but basically you have symptoms which, which got you the diagnosis, which is you can get vertigo attacks, tinnitus, uh, hearing loss, uh, kind of chronic dizziness, and that's what ends up getting you, you know, the, the formal diagnosis. Now, again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, a lot of doctors are going to say, well, just take a diuretic, you know, take HCTZ and, you know, we'll see you in six months. They don't really offer you much in terms of, you know, actively what can I do? You're kind of like left at the mercy of, you know, we'll just wait and see what happens. And I've been working with Meniere's patients for a couple of decades now. And I wanted to tell you, since you've just been diagnosed, that you don't have to live with it. Uh, you don't have to suffer. There are things you can do to be proactive, to get ahead of the curve, to stabilize your Meniere's, but you're going to have to be working with someone that already understands this. Unfortunately, uh, most of your ENTs uh, that are well-meaning, this is just not what they do, right? It's much more about diagnosis, about giving you the diuretic, but what they're going to kind of, uh, <laughs> they're not going to tell you, well, they're going to tell you that your, your diet has nothing to do with it except maybe caffeine uh, and, so, uh, uh, and salt, uh, which is true. But what they're going to kind of leave out is your immune system. Now, I've got a whole bunch of videos. I won't explain all of it here in this one again. But the immune system is the one thing that I've seen as a common thread over all these Meniere's patients I've seen over the years that make it to me. And the people that make it to me are the people that aren't stable. So maybe you get Meniere's disease and six months, a year, two months go by and your Meniere's is pretty stable, right? It's not worsening. You're not getting attacks. I mean, I hope that happens for you. Uh, and you're definitely going to be one of the, the lucky uh, minority for whom that happens. But the people that make it to me, their Meniere's is not stable. They're still having these recurring symptoms and life is, is not good. It's miserable. And what I've seen again and again and again is their immune system is a problem. Now, it's not always the same problem, but often there's an inflammatory issue happening for some reason that is causing this uh, response in their inner ear. It's like having inflammation in their inner ear. So there's a lot of testing that I like to do to... So there's testing I like to do to get a handle on that. There's multiple tissue antibody testing. There's comprehensive lymphocyte immunophenotyping testing. And I've got other videos where we kind of explain that. But basically what needs to happen if you've just been diagnosed with Meniere's disease is don't buy in to this idea that there's nothing you can do. Your diet has nothing to do with it because it does. It definitely has something to do with it. I've got videos that will talk about the triggers for attacks. I've got videos talking about the worst foods for Meniere's. But ultimately, you probably shouldn't be trying to treat this yourself. Uh, even if you're taking HCTZ, you know, and you're kind of limiting your caffeine, if your symptoms are not getting better and they're not stable over time, and we don't know yet because you just got diagnosed, uh, I think you need to be working with someone that understands the role of the immune system, understands how to do multiple tissue antibody testing, lymphocyte immunophenotyping, uh, how to interpret those tests, and then how to dig, right? Because if the immune system is the problem, uh, why is it the problem? Do you have an autoimmune problem you didn't know you had? Uh, do you have some sort of inflammatory problem related to blood sugar or food reactivities or some kind of infection or, or gut barrier compromise? You're not going to be able to figure that out on your own. You've got to work with someone who's already trained and has experience. So if you've been just diagnosed with Meniere's disease, uh, I know it can be a little bit scary. Believe me, I have a little Meniere's uh, from time to time myself, uh, and it's not fun. It's, it's pretty terrible. I want you to try to like take a breath and realize that there are people that know how to get ahead of this, but you're going to have to find one that knows what we've already talked about today. Until that time, I do have some videos you can use to try to, you know, clean up your diet a little bit, clean up your lifestyle, but ultimately you're going to have to work with someone that is experienced in looking at all these things we've talked about today. So don't give up hope and also uh, don't just settle for feeling bad because you don't have to. Okay. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.